Welcome to Monday Mailbag. I'm Bill Gagne, and I'm here to coach you up on finishing your basement. And before we get into this week's question, I want to take a minute to do something super cheesy that I see done on other channels, but I didn't really understand it until it's now it's happened here. And we recently just passed 1,100 subscribers. And I want to thank everybody who has subscribed, who's watched, who's taken this in, who's spending their time to do this. It really motivates me to keep doing this to help people. The emails, the questions, the video calls, the phone calls. I've talked to a whole bunch of great people. And it's really my pleasure to take the things that I know. They can't really help me any more uh, than they can help one person at a time and to spread them out to all these people so that you can finish your basement and save some money and make your life better. And I'm really surprised at how much I get out of that. Never mind anything else. That's really what I enjoy. I don't look at the numbers or any of that. Um, subscribers, watch hours. Sure, it's cool to look at that, but it doesn't really mean as much as the emails and the questions and people saying thank you for doing this. And it just motivates me to keep doing this. So shout out to all of you out there who have reached out and are watching right now. Second... In that same vein, I'm going to try to continue doing this Monday mailbag, but I learned how to use the community posts in YouTube, and I recently posted whether I should be trying to do a YouTube live where I answer people's questions, almost like a roundtable kind of thing where I'll go on for, I don't know, half hour, once or twice a month, and everybody can kind of ask me questions. Um, Please go and vote on that so I can figure out what I'm going to do. I want to continue to do these mailbags because I get probably two or three questions a week. I've been doing a couple of video calls with some people, a couple of phone calls, uh, emails, and I really enjoy it. I like somebody asking me questions and I can just get into it with them. So this question is from Raj, who I've been emailing a fair bit. Raj is trying to finish his basement. He was asking, can I install drywall standing up versus horizontal or staggered in order to avoid Butt joints, butt joints, sorry. And the answer is yes with an asterisk. Now, let me get into that later and explain why you should or should not do that. First, we're going to do a little drywall background tutorial here. In your typical uh, residential construction, your drywall is laid horizontally in a staggered or offset pattern. So that means you're going to lay one sheet, you're going to cut the other one in half, and you're going to lay the other. Sheets are four foot high. Your walls are typically eight foot high, so you're going to have one sheet on top of another. This is done for a few reasons. On your structural walls, it actually adds a little bit more rigidity because you're going perpendicular to the framing members. So it's making it a little bit stronger. And number two, you're going to offset or stagger your joints so you don't end up with cracking, right? If you have a joint that goes all the way down the wood stud and your house is going to move, right? Because the studs are made of wood, it's going to heave, it's going to shrink and all that stuff. You don't want that joint to crack. Your house is going to settle over the years. You're trying to avoid those joints cracking. Now, if you have one seam right down the middle in all these places and your house moves a little bit, and even just a little bit, you know, an eighth of an inch, now you're pulling on that joint. If they're offset, it's adding a little bit of strength to the joint and it's less likely to pop. So that is why you install them staggered and residential. Now, When do you install them as stand-ups? Typically, that is a commercial or ICI installation. It's done on steel studs, which are true. They do not have any bows or anything in them. They are not structural members. And it adds a layer of fireproofing and smokeproofing because your seams to the drywall are going to be landing on a steel stud. So that adds a little integrity in terms of fireproofing and smokeproofing. Have I installed stand-up sheets in a basement? Yes. Yes, I have. There's a few reasons. Typically, it's going to be I can't get full sheets down anyways. So one of the things when you're thinking about drywall and you're drywalling your house, you want to figure out, or sorry, drywalling your basement, you want to figure out how many sheets you can get and you need and how big is the biggest sheet you can get in. If you can't get an eight-foot sheet in and you you have a seven-foot ceiling, well, you're probably thinking about doing stand-ups, right? Stand-up sheets, which is vertical. That means vertical, standing up, okay? And if you have a low ceiling, 
You can't get full sheets. And if you have existing steel stud, existing steel stud is a great application for putting on vertical sheets because they are dead nuts straight. They're manufactured, right? Wood studs are made from trees, which, you know, go out in your yard, have a look. They aren't straight. Now, I talked about the asterisk. You do have a potential for problem when it comes to installing stand-up sheets on wood studs, right? We just talked about it. Trees, wood, studs, they're not straight. They have bows, they have warps, they have crowns. You want to be sure when you're framing your walls, if you're considering using stand-ups, one, that your studs land four feet on center all the time right? You want that joint there straight. So you're going to have your sheets overlap attaching and they're going to be right there coming on. So you have something to screw to. You can't have floating joints. So you want to make sure your framing is true and laid out properly and that you land on your four foots so that you have seams properly aligned, that it looks right. Or you may have some back framing to do. Now, the other thing is you want to pay attention to the crown of your lumber. I don't know if we've talked about this, but your lumber is going to have a crown, potentially. They're not all going to be straight. You do not want your crowns to be opposite. You either want them laying rounded in. Typically, you want them rounded in or rounded out if you've made that decision. That's not what I'm recommending. You want your crowns rounded into the room so that way the screws won't pop. And if you have any that are not, right, if you have some bumps, you have some some twisted studs, if that lands on a joint, now you're going to have a hump where you have this four or seven foot seam, potentially seven, eight foot seam coming straight down. That hump on a vertical sheet is going to be really hard to feather out and make it look flat. That's where the expertise comes. When you're installing your drywall, you have, can't just think, hey, I got the drywall up. It's got to be on in a way that you're going to tape it so that it looks flat. Uh, spoiler alert, your walls aren't flat. They just look flat because you're putting compound on them. You're feathering it out. It looks flat over a distance. Drywall is the biggest part of your basement project. It is both covers the biggest square footage and it will take the most time. So it's one of the reasons it's so expensive. You want to be able to have it done as well as possible. We're going to spend a number of videos talking about drywall because it is the most expensive thing to do. It is the most time consuming thing to do. Hanging board is one of the things that you can do that can save you money. And if it's done properly, it'll cost you less for taping. If it's done poorly and you're hiring somebody to come in and tape where you're taping it, you're going to make your life or the taper's life harder. And it's going to make it harder to have it look flat. Because when the paint goes on, you're going to look at it and go, damn. And you're going to look at it every time you walk into your basement. So let's pay attention to that. Okay? Yes. To answer your question, Raj, you can do stand-ups. I've done it on a number of projects. Just be careful that where your joints land, there isn't a big hump in your wall. Because when you're going to tape it or whoever's going to tape it is going to have a heck of a time getting that to look flat. So as I mentioned earlier, please go check the survey out. Uh, I'm seriously considering doing some YouTube lives. I have no idea how to do it. And it might be a little weird and awkward, but I'm willing to give it a try. Because really, for a guy with a hump on his forehead, I'm already out here talking to you on the internet. I may as well do it uh, live. Why not? Let's get really awkward. So as always, thank you for watching and good luck on your project.